Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at PASC 16 in Lausanne, Switzerland. And I'm here with Marina, and she's got a poster to tell us about. How are you doing today, Marina? Very well, thank you. Well, good, good, good. What's, what's your poster about? So my poster is about uh, the theory called quantum chromodynamics. So uh, I don't know if you know, there are four uh, interactions in nature. The gravitational interaction, electromagnetic, weak and strong. And quantum chromodynamics is actually a theory which describes the strong interaction. And this is the interaction which binds, binds quarks and gluons to form hadrons, like protons and neutrons. So basically I'm studying the substructure of protons and neutrons, then their masses, and then decays of the other particles formed out of quarks and gluons. And uh, uh, the, the reason why uh, I'm actually at this supercomputing conference is uh, the fact that uh, the calculations I'm doing actually require uh, large computational resources. Uh, the way we are studying this substructure of protons and neutrons is that we are discretizing space-time. So basically we have four-dimensional lattices, which are discretized, so in, in three spatial and one uh, time dimension. And uh, these lattices are really large, so basically we are talking about matrices of the order of like million sites. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and in order to... Uh, work with them, we actually need to use some uh, supercomputing centers. For example, an example I give here is the one uh, in Logano, here in Switzerland. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was and just going to ask you if you use CSCS, and I see yes, you're at, at, okay. Yeah. yeah, recently I got a computational uh, time there with okay. the project I applied for. Okay. And this work is done in collaboration with colleagues from INRIA, from France, from Grenoble and Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the reason, uh, the, the way we combine our expertise together is uh, the the fact that they wrote this uh, SimGrid uh, program, it's a simulator uh, which can give you the ben benchmarks, so it, it can actually tell you, in simple words, how fast will my code run on a particular supercomputer. So I don't even have to log into the CSCS or some other arbitrary machine in the world where which they have already benchmarked. So, uh, so in principle now I'm able to uh, run my quantum chromodynamics code on my laptop and together with the SimGrid simulator and then it can uh, tell me how fast will my code run on some uh, distant supercomputer. Okay. Okay. Oh, very cool. So now, isn't it, isn't it hard to map where these things are because of Heisenberg, right? Aren't they vibrating and they're at some indeterminate position? Or is that where the time fourth dimension comes in? The, the, all the uncertainties are taken yeah. care of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, I mean, it's a good question because yeah. I mean, we do, uh, this theory which we are studying is quantum. Yeah. So that's yeah. why the, the first cue, so from quantum chromodynamics. So uh, it's a quantum theory and uh, yeah, all the principles of quantum, me me uh, quantum mechanics are taken care of, but it is uh, basically... Uh, an extension of quantum me uh, mechanics, which is called quantum field theory, uh, because uh, because this uh, uh, degrees of freedom that we are studying here are quark fields and gluon fields. So it's not uh, mechanics only; it's actually field theory. Very cool. And basically, all the predictions, for example, uh, at CERN, uh, at the Large Hadron Collider, mm -hmm. are also using in part this quantum chromodynamics, but not in the same way as we are doing here, because uh, the Large Hadron Collider, uh, the, the physics is done at high energies, mm -hmm. and there is this particular uh, feature of this uh, strong interaction that theory I'm studying. Um, in the sense that at high energies, the coupling between quarks and gluons is very small. So basically one can apply something which is called perturbation theory. Uh, this means that you can first completely neglect the interaction and then uh, turn on the interaction piece by piece. So basically you, for, uh, you compute the first order correction and second order correction and each next correction is smaller than the previous one. So you can, your result just gets more and more accurate. And in this regime where I'm working in lower energies, the coupling is very strong, so basically if you would just neglect interaction and then start adding the corrections, each next correction would be larger than the previous one, so you wouldn't converge to the right result. And that's why we actually need to do this supercomputers uh, and, uh, and to simulate the discretized space-time lattice and not just do perturbation here. Okay, okay. Now could you, uh, eventually, could you simulate the whole collider? Um, not yet. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> okay. Not yet, but, Not we, yet. but we can actually 
extend our, our uh, simulation so that we don't do only uh, uh, quantum chromodynamics. So we can, for example, add some other for of these three forces. So we can add electromagnetism, for example, yeah. and do the four, two forces together. So far, so much. <laughs> right, right. But possibly in the future that we will be able to do all. Cool. So for, for, for the moment, there is no need, actually. Okay. okay. Well, last question. I mean, uh, this, is this your first time uh, at the PASC conference yes, here? this is my first yeah. time at PASC conference. So I've been in Switzerland only for a year and a half, and uh -huh. I, I had this project at CSCS uh, for half a year now, a little bit less. Uh -huh. So this is the first time I actually came into contact with. Did, did you find it valuable so far, the sessions? Was yes. it good? All yes, right. it's really interesting. Yeah, great, great. Well, hey, thanks for sharing this with us. This Thank is really, you. really cool. Good thanks. Job. Good job.